Hello everyone. Welcome to monthly series of webinar. Today I will be talking about PuppetDB. So uh, I will give you some time at the end of the session for the question answer. If you want to follow, you can use the link below at the bottom of the webinar. So about me, my name is Krishna Prajapati. I am working as MySQL engineer at Olin Data and exploring other technologies. We provide open source training and consulting in the technologies like Puppet, uh, Node.js, Linux, and MySQL. So uh, in addition to that, the complete LAMP stack. So overview. I will give a short description about Puppet. You should have the basic Puppet knowledge in order to understand the webinar. In the next slide, I have added few links which can guide you to set up Puppet. So uh, we will be talking about uh, what is Puppet. So for those who are not aware, so the next topic will be what is Puppet DB. The compatibility of Puppet DB, like uh, what are the versions compatible and uh, what are the operating systems it can support. So after that, uh, how to install the Puppet DB, how to search it, and uh, later, uh, what are the configurations variables for uh, Puppet DB? So what are the features? Just like the one here I've mentioned, exported resource, and how to scale. Puppet using Puppet DB. Support, uh, suppose we have uh, many thousands of uh, nodes we have, then in that case, how Puppet can scale using Puppet DB. So I'm moving to my next slide. Anybody is uh, having any questions or uh, they can't hear me, just let me know into the chat section or they can even raise, uh, raise their hands. So what is Puppet? Puppet is a configuration management software based on Ruby. It is designed to help system administrators to automate many repetitive tasks they perform regularly. It defines and enforces the state of your infrastructure throughout the software development cycle. It ensures consistency across your infrastructure. It scales very well from one server to 200k servers. The average Puppet Enterprise installation seen from 300 servers to 600 servers. It supports multi-platform environment like Linux, Flavor, Mac, BSD, and Solaris. With the strength of multi-platform, it is widely used and adapted. Puppet is open source product and also available as a commercial offering from Puppet Labs as a Puppet Enterprise. So now I'm moving to my next slide. So uh, what is PuppetDB? PuppetDB is the fast, scalable, and reliable data warehouse for Puppet. It caches the data generated by Puppet and gives you an advanced feature at an awesome speed with a powerful API. So, <coughs> so uh, basically, Puppet is an API which sits between the Puppet Master and the uh, uh, where our data warehouse, which is PostgreSQL. So it, it's a uh, powerful API. PuppetDB collects data generated by Puppet. It enables advanced Puppet features like exported resources and can be the foundation for other applications that uses Puppet data. Puppet stores the most recent facts from every node 
the most recent catalog for every node. Together, this gives you a huge inventory of metadata about every node in your infrastructure and a searchable database for every single resource being managed on any node. So uh, basically, uh, PostgreSQL database is the only one database which is supported by PuppetDB and uh, it stores all the Puppet information like facts, catalogs, everything. So uh, the data can be queried, queried using query and uh, whatever is run like reports, facts, uh, all the things can be found on the PostgreSQL database. So uh, this helps uh, in, uh, in order to make the puppet very scalable and reliable. So uh, when we are going to use thousands and thousands of server in puppet, so this can help to make it faster. Okay, so uh, feel free to ask the questions. You can put it up into the chat sections or uh, feel free to raise your hands. So now I am moving to the next uh, slide. So uh, here uh, I have shown the compatibility of uh, Puppet. So uh, the latest version of Puppet is compatible within this range, 3.7.1 to less than 5. And uh, the operating systems which are supported are listed over here, that is Red Hat, Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE Linux, Scientific Centers, and Oracle Linux as well. Uh, I'm moving to my next slide. So uh, here I have uh, given a brief of the puppet diagram, uh, uh, like how the whole thing works. So uh, basically, here it will give you a full illustration along with the, uh, the flow of the uh, flow of the work, how it goes. So uh, basically, the agent, the agent which is called as nodes, it sends the facts information. Facts information are the metadata about the systems. Those are the facts. So uh, the node itself sends the fact informations. For an example, it can be IP address, host name, uh, all similar kinds of things. So the node sends all the facts information to the Puppet Master. So after getting the facts information, the Puppet Master is uh, able to know that uh, what system it is, and it will search its own metadata that what are the available catalogs available for this node. So it will compile the catalog and it will again, the Puppet Master again sends the catalogs to the node for the implementation. When the nodes got, uh, catalogs got executed on the nodes, it generates a report. So report again goes back to the Puppet Master and after that it goes to the report server. So this is how the whole uh, workflow is there. I'm uh, moving to my next slide. So uh, here uh, uh, I have shown you how the Puppet DB module can be searched. So simply you have to give a command Puppet module search Puppet DB. So uh, this will list uh, show you a big list of uh, Puppet DB modules available from different authors. Let me show you the same thing on the Org module. So uh, basically, here you can see the second line. Notice searching https fork.api.puppetslab.com. So it again searches this link. Let let us go back to the link and see what is there.
so here we here is the fog.paperlabs.com this is the repository modules repository so all the modules are available here <coughs> from puppet labs as well as from different authors so here uh, so here you can just type it puppet db and uh, it will list out all the puppet db modules from puppet labs as well as from different authors so uh, the first one you can see this is available from the puppet labs so this is the most recommended since it's from puppet labs it is fully tested so there will not be any issues so uh, it is recommended to go with this one and uh, you can uh, see the what is the version number five and uh, when it was uh, released and uh, the number of downloads you can see over here so uh, here you can find the whole command puppet uh, for installing the puppet module so you can uh, just copy out this command and uh, install it using this so here it cons uh, contains the whole changes activities log readme everything is over here so uh, this can give you a detailed information about uh, puppet db and uh, here you can see uh, what are the dependencies while uh, so these are the dependencies for uh, puppet db while installing this puppet module install puppet labs it is uh, automatically fetch the all its uh, dependency modules so and you should also check the compatibility on whatever operating systems you are following up so almost it is supported by most of the Linux operating systems. So you don't have to worry much. And uh, this is the whole uh, readme file. So, so here it gives a brief about how, what it is, how to set up configurations, variables, configs and the optional parameters, everything is available over here. Okay, so uh, with this command, we are going to install uh, Puppet modules. Uh, we are going to search uh, the Puppet DB. And uh, I'm moving to my next slide. So uh, here uh, I have used the same command Puppet module install Puppet Labs Puppet DB. So uh, what it is going to do is uh, it will install puppet db along with its dependencies so you can see the dependencies are listed below and uh, you can uh, already see that it is downloading from the same link what i have opened just in the browser and uh, these are the puppet db these are the dependencies firewall INI file, PostgreSQL, APT, Concat, and stdlib. So, uh, so Puppet uh, uh, DB works with this PostgreSQL database. It, it Puppet stores all of its information, everything in this uh, PostgreSQL database. If you want to verify that uh, what are the installed uh, modules on Puppet, so you can just uh, verify with this command. See, so you can give this command puppet module list. So it will list all the modules which has been installed on the on the server, puppet modules on the server. So you, you can see all the listed module name along with version number. And uh, here it also gives you the location uh, where the modules has been installed. The latest uh, version of Puppet uh, uh, for installing the module is this one etc puppet labs code environment production modules so uh, I'm moving to my next topic now
So here I am. I uh, will be talking about uh, Puppet DB configurations. Puppet DB ports for uh, sec uh, secure traffic defaults to 8081. Ensure this port is open between the master and the DB services. To enable uh, facts and catalogs in Puppet DB, add the following settings to the master block of the puppet.corner. So uh, this is the configuration settings that should be added to the master block. Puppet uh, DB includes support for storing puppet reports. This feature can be enabled by simply adding the puppet DB report processor in your puppet.conf. Uh, I'm talking about this one. So this puppet db so in the first line you can see the reports is equal to store comma puppet db just by simply mentioning the puppet db puppet will uh, will store all the reports into the postgresql database so this will keep puppet default behavior of storing reports to uh, YML while also sending the reports to Puppet DB. So, this, uh, so these are the and the remaining two stored configs is equal to true is the dependency for stored configs underscore backend is equal to Puppet. So this is the, the important parameters for uh, making Puppet DB to work. In addition to this, there are other parameters that can be checked into the Puppet document. It's available on uh, puppetlabs.com into the document section. I'm moving to my next topic. So uh, one of the important uh, feature of Puppet DB is uh, exported resource. So here I have uh, shown the commands declaration and collecting. So uh, these are the codes for exp exported resource. So in the uh, in the initial code, export the host entry file. So the host file entry will be exported for all the nodes and uh, in the below code it will be collected. So that's the syntax how it works. Exported resource require catalog storage and searching formerly known as stored configs to be enabled on the Puppet Master. Both the catalog storage and uh, searching are provided by Puppet DB. An exported resource declaration specifies a desired state for a resource. Any node can collect the exported resource and manage its, its own copy of it. Exported resource allows nodes to share information with each other. This is useful when one node has information then other node needs to needs in order to manage a resource. The node with the information can construct and publish the resource and the node managing the resource can collect it. The, the most uh, common use case of uh, exported resource are monitoring and uh, backup. Okay, I am uh, moving to my, okay, uh, there is a, a hand raised from one person that is uh, Vinod Jangure. Hey Vinod, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 now I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah. Krishna, uh, I wanted like like one example like how how exported resource based resource uh, uh, can uh, we can use actually. I know the concept, but like I'm like uh, pretty fuzzy with how how it can it will be get used. Yeah, uh, basically uh, the a simple example I have shown it over here. 
So here, uh, what it is going to do, uh, the at the double at the rate is for exported resource. Okay, and here the here we are mentioning that host uh, name and IP address. These are the two host file entry. So it will be exported using the above code and at the bottom of the code you can see some syntax host uh, double less than sign pipe and uh, pipe and uh, greater than sign. So the initial part is for the declaration and the bottom part is for collecting. So when uh, we put the whole code into the puppet, so it will export the host file entry for all the nodes and it will be collected on the puppet DB. So uh, you can find the whole information will be available into the PostgreSQL database. So in the same way, uh, you can uh, see, you can, even you can find it out on the on the website, Puppet Labs website, that uh, how this uh, exported resource is used for uh, managing the monitoring and backups, basically the Nagios. So uh, their examples are already available over there. You can just have a look at that. Too. Fine, Vinod? Okay, I'm fine, fine, Krishna. Got it. Thanks, thanks. Okay. So uh, I'm moving to my next slide. So uh, here uh, we will be talking about uh, how we can uh, scale the Puppet by using the Puppet DB. So uh, basically whenever we are going to use Puppet in more than a, in a huge environment where thousands of servers are involved, thousands of nodes are available. So in that case, so we can uh, just uh, split up the things into separate nodes. So uh, here we are talking about, uh, th so this is the Puppet Master node. So uh, this is the syntax which is available on the Puppet uh, DB uh, README module. So you can get, get the same syntax from there. So, so here we have uh, split up the whole thing into, into nodes. So the Puppet Master will be on one node, Puppet DB can be on another node, and the third node can be the PostgreSQL server. So uh, Puppet DB is an API which sits between the Puppet Master and the PostgreSQL server. So if we can split up the things on different, different nodes, so the in that way, it can, <coughs> Puppet can be scaled to a high level, which can support uh, many thousands of servers. So uh, here you can uh, see uh, Puppet DB underscore server is equal to Puppet DB. That Puppet DB is the host name. You can put up the fully qualified domain name over here. So this will be the Puppet Master. And uh, in the next slide, yeah, here, here, uh, the second uh, code is for the PostgreSQL server. So here we are uh, defining that uh, which node is going to be the PostgreSQL server. So Puppet DB hyphen PostgreSQL is going to be the Puppet DB PostgreSQL, <coughs> Puppet DB PostgreSQL server. And the last one is for the database where it has been hosted. So uh, all the things has been uh, splitted up. The PostgreSQL server will be a different, Puppet Master will be a different, and the Puppet DB can also be a different server. So in this way, it, can, it is a lot much scalable. This whole uh, code is uh, available on the Puppet DB module readme file. So if more details are required that can be checked over there. Let me show it over here. Okay, so here we are. So uh, basically, so here you can see that a single node setup so uh, if you go with this one, it is going to install the Puppet server, uh, 
puppet master postgresql server puppet db everything on the same one box so this can be useful in a scenario where we have a few nodes like 10 or 20 nodes it works well but uh, whenever you are going to scale it you have to go with the multi node setup which has been mentioned over here so this part shows the multi node setup and here is the code syntax how you can use it it's very simple so uh, this is an example of very basic three nodes in addition to three nodes you can uh, also add more nodes in order to scale it uh, in my next uh, slide I will be talking about how we can scale it further so uh, at the bottom of this uh, slide you will be able to see the other configuration variables and versions and other related things so uh, these are the so uh, puppet module comes up with its own uh, default uh, database name username and password so uh, it is uh, strictly recommended to change the uh, password so that uh, by default it's puppet db so you should change it to something a strong password so these are the parameters which can be used let me show you database so so here is the parameter over here so this parameter can be used to change the database password so make it a strong database password and uh, other uh, optional parameters are available over here I'm moving to my next slide okay so uh, this one is a diagram uh, in order to scale it further so basically you can have the puppet master on one server and uh, you can install PostgreSQL server with a hot standby so with the PG pool 2 as a load balancer so whatever request uh, comes from the puppet master goes to the load balancer pg pool pg pool 2 is a load balancer for uh, postgresql database so uh, in the below it will be uh, the pg pool will, is the load balancer which is going to take the puppet master request to the right postgresql server to the active postgresql server so this is a kind of a high availability which can be used in order to make it more scalable and for higher level availability so uh, in case uh, there is uh, some issue with uh, one of the postgresql server the another postgresql server will take the task and uh, in that way uh, it provides high available high availability to the puppet so this is uh, one of the high availability features for scaling purpose so uh, feel free to put up your questions here or raise up your hands I am uh, moving so this is the block diagram for high availability for PostgreSQL database so these are the upcoming trainings which we have so you can uh, get in touch with us for the upcoming trainings so here uh, you can find our uh, previous webinars so uh, we have uh, taken webinars on most of the very really common topics 
so you all you all can find it over here so so this is all about so everybody is uh, welcome to put up your questions over here i will be i will answer it uh i can see few few hand raise hi jenny tell me jenny can you hear me Uh, Ginny, you can put up your questions into the chat section so that I can uh, give you the answers. So, hello, Vinod. Vinod, can you hear me? Uh, I see some uh, problems over here. Uh, Vinod, Jenny, you can uh, send send up your questions to me at the email address over here, Krishna at the onindata.com. So uh, I will send answers to your queries. So we will send you the slides to you after this webinar and uh, thank you very much all of you thanks once again